drivers will have their operator license and vehicles insurance suspended. If your driver is driving more than eight hours, which is the stipulated period, um, we will make sure that whether or not they're involved in a crash, we will take away your license. But if we find that actually they get involved in a crash and they were operating more than the eight hours, it is a definite uh, red flag and we will take away your license. On excess passengers, the excess passengers, drivers and conductors, uh, on the ex exchange passengers in a motor vehicle uh, and also on a motorcycle, drivers and uh, conductors shall be detained and charged. We appeal to the judiciary to meet out the highest possible penalties to traffic offenders, including riders, pedestrians, drivers, and passengers. We also want to confirm here that um, the excess passengers themselves will be charged. If we find you are in a motor vehicle carrying 14, or PSV vehicle carrying 14 people, and you are forcing yourself to sit on one seat with somebody else, you will be charged. So I urge uh, members of public to observe the uh, traffic uh, rules and make sure that when they find that a motor vehicle is full, they should not... No Kenyan is forced to board any motor vehicle. None. Public service vehicle. Actually, to the contrary, we are the ones who force ourselves to inside it. The pro box that got accident in Kericho had eight people inside it for a vehicle that is supposed to carry four people. It had eight. And sometimes it's more than eight, it is 15, it's 20. And all that people boarding those vehicles voluntarily, overloading voluntarily. And we are saying we will charge you. Forget about the fact that uh, we, are, we, we are saving your life. We will charge you first uh, uh, so that for you to know that uh, your life this country. On compliance of uh, transport operators, uh, all transport operators who do not meet the minimum requirements of PSV regulation 2014, that is minimum threshold of service of a vehicle, non-compliance with road service license, inspection certificate and PSV license, all of them their operation uh, will cease and they will be suspended. On compliance of speed limiter vendors, there is immediate suspension of speed limiter vendors with low performance in speed management from fitting new limiters of NTSA is completed. However, they will be expected to maintain 100% compliance on vehicles already fitted with their limiters. What we are saying is that we want to to hurt uh, to, to deal with where it hurts most for the speed speed limiters uh, vendors of uh, speed limiters by ensuring that we deny them the right to uh, continue selling their speed limiters until uh, the checks are done and if they are found to be culpable they will be suspended. But even after that, they will still continue servicing the vehicles that already have speed limiters. Border border, uh, on border border and pedestrian safety, county governments and national police service will enforce all relevant sections of the Traffic Act to ensure compliance and safeguard the lives of border border riders, pillion passengers, and pedestrians. You know, we lose, we have, up to now, we have lost about 470 pedestrians. And we have lost almost. Uh, uh, 100, 105 billion passengers and another 300 motorcycle riders. And those are the ones accounted, accounted for. And you know in some parts of the country, especially rural areas, some are not accounted for. And then now some of the pedestrians, the 470, almost half of them as a result of the recklessness of the border border riders. The border border riders are contributing to uh, in that figure, you are talking about, as uh, as we speak now, almost 600 people dying because of recklessness of border border riders. This is a very serious issue, and this is a devolved function. 
we want the county governments to designate areas of operation of the border border right act and require compliance also from them insofar as the law is concerned. Enforcement will be done jointly between the county governments and the National Police Service. On the road agencies, I have instructed all the road agencies, especially the Kenya National Highway Authority, to immediately undertake road markings, install necessary road furniture, and put in measures to remove stalled vehicles. Additionally, we want them to uh, mount speed calming measures and ensure that black spots are attended to. Finally, NTSA should hasten the process of outsourcing of motor vehicle inspection to enhance its capacity in assessing the roadworthiness of vehicles countrywide. What we want to do is that we want to stop inspecting vehicles the way we have been doing, and we want to automate. And to do so, we want the support of the private sector by outsourcing this assignment to a capable private sector. I need to bring this to the attention of the country, that we have been expecting a lot from the National Police Service, particularly the Traffic Department, yet very little has been done to, to support them or to resource them. The law enforcement agencies have tire tirelessly served our great nation, but unfortunately there is very little enforcement, uh, investment towards the resourcing the traffic police to undertake this mandate. As the government, more resources will be directed towards enforcement function to address the capacity building, acquisition of equipment, including enforcement devices, and adoption of the latest technology. In the next two weeks, His Excellency the President will be, uh, will be direct, uh, based on his direction, will, will be giving uh, an update to the country on the resources that we are going to give to ensure that the police have, have uh, uh, patrol vehicles, uh, the traffic police have patrol vehicles, but also from the NTSA side to make sure that we have vehicles that can support enforcement. We will also, uh, the National Police Service will be working together with the Treasury to make sure that resources are provided for, for training of our traffic police officers. So far, 1,000 police, uh, traffic police officers have been trained, uh, 1,200, and we need to train others 2,000 plus to ensure that there is enforcement. As I have read, the IG police is going to, this week, uh, going to appoint county police uh, uh, traffic police uh, enforcement officers that are going to work at the county level. Progressively also, we, the presence of NTSA is in 17 regions. We're going to enhance that to make sure that there is a coordinator of NTSA in every county to make sure that this enforcement is done. Um, other services which we are going to engage in is to make sure that there is more awareness that is going to be done. There is uh, more training programs uh, and, and we will uh, work together, together with all stakeholders across the country to make sure that we deal with um, uh, problems of uh, road safety in the country by changing uh, behavior. I really want to, to emphasize this as I close, that if most of these problems we are talking about here would actually be averted if we change our behavior as Kenyans. If we accept to uh, follow the, uh, the rules, if all of us ensure that uh, we don't board a, a, a full motor vehicle, if we ensure that we don't board a vehicle that the driver is drunk, if we ensure that we don't board, uh, we don't use a border border, uh, uh, more than one person, if we insist that we must have a helmet, you know, most people say, oh, the helmet is dirty, but which one is worse? Yeah? Is it worse to die or it's worse to, to get home when you are feeling that it's dirty? You know? So if you really have to use a border border, you better follow the rules by making sure that you have a helmet. We will be arresting the passenger also if you don't have a helmet. Not just the, 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 uh, the border border rider. We will impound all those motorcycles that are not going to comply. I know we did that and then politics came into play and uh, you know everybody because they want to play nice to their to their political players uh, returned some of those uh, motorcycles back to the streets we want to ensure that that enforcement is done until order is achieved in our country but we want these things to be done not for me not in the name of the minister not for purpose of the glory of the cabinet secretary 
It's for posterity and for the good of our country. And I urge all of us to work together to support each other to achieve this objective. This statement is a joint position of the government of Kenya. Those who are represented here and those who are not, this is an agreed joint position of the people of Kenya or through your government. Asante Nisana, unless there are questions, we will... Uh, 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 just before I, I take the questions, in the coming weeks, because, you know, so many people are obsessed with cabinet secretary. Every time, everything that happens, where is the minister? You know, people even enter into a, 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 an overloaded vehicle and they take videos and pictures and ask, where is Murkomen? He has failed. Murkomen has failed. But he is inside, he himself is inside a bus that is uh, overloaded and he thinks he has not failed. So, I want us uh, to now focus on engaging the institutions that are carrying out enforcement. Uh, our uh, traffic commander is here. She's ready and willing to give you information on the, on the enforcement works that are being done by the police. And the regulator is here. The NTSA is ready. If it is the Gazette, uh, I mean, uh, the registering motor vehicles, uh, I mean, companies that are violating the law, if it is providing inspectors to assist the, the National Police Service in terms of inspecting roadworthiness of the vehicle, the NTSA is going to be here to uh, work. Engage George here. Engage uh, Mary here. So that you make sure that these are the people you... Don't, don't be too obsessed in getting the minister. Deal with the agencies that are actually <laughs> dealing with this issue. You know, everybody is just like, I want the minister. By the time a problem is getting to a cabinet secretary, you know, we have a long route of people who are engaged in enforcement, and they will tell you day to day what's happening. Of course, the buck stops here eventually when it comes to uh, uh, regulating and uh, uh, matters of transport. And the buck stops also with my colleague of Interior when it comes to enforcement. But that's not what... You should not be looking for someone, someone to blame. You should be looking for somebody to resolve the problem, you know, and, and work together and assist the police. What happened to the question of getting what is wrong and looking for the police service to, to see if that can be corrected or NTSA that can be corrected? I want you to, as a media houses here, to engage more the NTSA, engage more the, 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 uh, the traffic uh, commandant here and the police officers that she works with on enforcement to make sure that our country gets better. But if you don't really resist the temptation to degenerate to the converse, political conversation and focus on resolving this problem, which is endemic. By the way, uh, I have statistics here. When I take people, the, the traffic accidents have been growing continuously. I have here from 205 all the way to, to now. They keep just going up, 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 up continuously every year. You know, and it is an issue that we have not been able to arrest as the people of Kenya because a lot of it requires our personal behavior and intervention. Now I'll take the questions. I will take from one, two, three, four. Thank you, Aziri. Now that there are no ladies who, are, who want to ask a question. Thank you, Aziri. My name is Francis Ancom. I work for KTN News. Yeah. My, question, my first question is on school bus safety. Yeah. And specifically, I want to pose a question about our youngest commuter, those in the kindergarten yeah. and the lower school. Increasingly, we are seeing uh, most of these school buses, they lack seat belts. Mm -hmm. And some of them, even with seat belts, they are not appropriate for the young commuters. And some of these uh, buses are also very crowded. And interestingly, some of them pass through police uh, checks and even roadblocks and mm. they are not checked. Would you agree that there is a lapse in uh, surveillance uh, to protect our youngest commuters? My, yeah. second question, yeah. Yeah. Sorry, my second question is about uh, last year you made... Let's try to make it 111. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very briefly. Yeah. Last year you had a commitment about mapping out black spots. Yes. And uh, you, you even went again ahead to give a timeline of 30 days to map out all the black spots across the country. Mm -hmm. Would you say that you finished mapping out and you even, you even promised about cameras to be stationed? To be installed. Okay, sorry, I forgot about the cameras, right? right. Yes. Thank you. Uh, how far are you with this? Thank you. I'll take the question so that uh, take them once. Okay, thank you, Aziz. My name is Kibaswa from People Daily. Uh, one of the popular suggestions um, around the country and everywhere on road safety has been to do on the roads to reduce the severity and the number of people mm -hmm. who are dying on the roads. Where is this program in this government? And we have any time for it. Then number two, a quick one again. Huh? 
some of those measures you, you read there, they look like there's a research behind them. If they were to be implemented, at what percentage can you reduce the rock energy? Uh, yeah. Uh, yes, uh, Yes, Waziri, my name is Abdiaziz Ashu from KBC. Uh, Waziri, last year you started a conversation on testing all drivers, especially for PSV. Are we likely to see the government going back there to NTSA? And secondly, Waziri, you have not addressed one of the major issues that is causing not to point a, a finger at the police, but corruption. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, last one. Commandino Nito Moses Mokisha from Citizen TV. So, in language, why have you visited the court to be as or recent to the court to defend the visa with Jai? Where is the laxity? As I said, maybe you can be a shida in the court. If you want to use the sports, you can 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 use the sports. Ule msistizo likuwa kusene kama December, ngejaribu kwa angalia ata idadi ya hivi visa likuwa chini sana. Ya kutakuja January, hakuwa na visa kama Feb, Kaza. Na ukijaribu kwa angalia kwa zile spot checks hivi mejaribu kufanya, we find that there is laxity in terms of, I don't know if you can address that in terms of the laxity. Thank you, thank you very much. First of all, uh, Francis, the question of uh, laxity in the school uh, bus enforcement, it's not just the school buses, it's just as many transport. Many people, um, as I was saying earlier, have gone back to, to uh, violating these rules. You know, it's one thing to do the rule, and the other is to enforce. And this enforcement requires, it's uh, both ways. The people who use the transport, uh, uh, okay. the vehicles, and also the police. Although we can't have enough policemen to stop people and enforce them, we have enough Kenyans inside these vehicles who can stop this bad behavior. So it starts with personal responsibility that is on our side. Number two, I agree with you that if you look at some of the vehicles transporting our children, they look like they are very old. They are finished their work with Matatu work, and now they are, they are on the road. That's why one of the directive we gave here is that all school vehicles now must be presented for inspection before May 1st. All of them. And we'll make sure that we do our best to, 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 to weed out the ones that are not roadworthy. But also I request parents, yeah, not to accept their children to be dropped using these unroadworthy vehicles. If you look at these vehicles the way they are, and many of these parents are paying, especially you've talked about private schools. They're paying a lot of money to take their children to those schools. And they're paying transport fee. And they are, it's a huge amount. We, we, we want to ask parents also to, to, to take responsibility, to help us uh, 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 making sure that they reject uh, uh, transport uh, vehicles that are unroadworthy. Uh, you've asked the question of uh, uh, mapping out the black spots. Yes, we did. And we've always known where the black spots are. Uh, that's why we are stationing uh, enforcement around those black spots. If you, if you look at the recent accidents, most of them have happened after hour. And uh, part of the reason is because after, if you do, say from 7 to the next day, 5 in the morning, it's because people go drink and then they cause accidents on the road. We've not been able to police service and the NTSA to be on the road at night. And that's why we, in the directive we've given is that we are now uh, f uh, trying to put together resources and start with the most serious uh, black spots by having them operating not just during the day but also at night uh, so that they can help us in these black spots. Um, I know that there is a question that, yes, uh, Kobasu asked about dueling. Dueling is not uh, an, easy, uh, an easy thing. We have a contract that is ongoing in Gata the, of Dwali, and the contractors promised that by June. We already awarded, as I promised last year, but the contractor is saying he's, he's going to finish the work by June this year. We are putting him on task to make sure that he has put in uh, place the separators the, the same way we did in Salga. Those are some of the interventions we are putting in uh, around black spots. And we'll try to do so in the few areas that are uh, uh, actually black spots. But I mean, let me say this. All these interventions that we need as a country requires money. It's not, 
I mean, as a, as, as a ministry, would be very willing to, to do as much. Let me give you an example of Nidhi Bridge. Nidhi Bridge to be realigned, to realign it to become straight so that you don't have that corners. It needs 15 billion. 10 billion for land acquisition and 5 to 6 billion for construction. To construct a tunnel at Nidhi Bridge, and I'm telling you these are designs that have been done. To construct a tunnel there, you need 50 billion to do a, a tunnel to go through. So it's not, it's not for the lack of knowledge and ability to do these things. It is, I mean, ability in terms of brain power. It's the resources that we do not have as a country. Uh, the, the problem is that we cannot really provide so that, therefore, we are requesting drivers to actually just observe the road signs and to drive slowly because that is what we can afford. We can afford to construct the roads in the manner in which they are, with the corners that they have. Uh, and, 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 you know, when people, in, if you go to other countries that have a lot of money, they don't go through the climbing hills. They cut uh, tunnels inside the, the, the hills because they have the money to do so. We are living within our means, and within that means, we need to observe uh, road. We need to go for the cheaper option, which is uh, observing the road traffic uh, re requirements. How far can uh, the, the scientifically? I cannot put figures uh, onto the number of numbers that are going to reduce. Vehicles are increasing, uh, so ours is to make sure that you reduce it as much as possible. There is no country in the world that is zero accident. That's as a matter of fact, but. What countries try to do is to make sure that if there is an accident that happens, it becomes only accident, not 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 things that are preventable, not 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 the kind of recklessness that we see in our roads that has uh, very uh, crazy numbers up there, uh, making it difficult for us. Yes, the, you you will be getting uh, uh, the retesting of the motor vehicles. I'd be, I mean, uh, drivers had been uh, suspended for for the organizations to arrange themselves. Soon, as I announced recently, we are going to roll out, again, retesting of all drivers, including medical tests. And we are going to give you the framework of how we are going to do so before any driver can get the license on the retesting. Uh, on the corruption, corruption is, uh, is, 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 is a problem all over. <clears throat> Let me start by saying, uh, the person who is tampering with a speed limiter is corrupt. That's corruption. I, I think many people think that corruption is, is just only by when there is money. Because that corruption is tampering with the speed limit so that they can drive faster to make more money <coughs> at the expense of people's lives. Corruption also include, include, uh, includes uh, overloading. That's a corrupt practice because you, know, you, are, you are going against the, the law. Bribing a police officer or an NTSA officer is corruption, yeah, and uh, and and it's two way. And the person who is bribing the police actually is because he knows that he has violated the the rules. The one who doesn't bribe knows that is is a good standing. He has a good vehicle and so forth. So it's not the corruption is there, and it's something we are trying to fight. And it's not only on road traffic issues. Corruption is in contracts. It's in many things, including people who compromise designs or compromise the quality of a road. That is corruption, and that is something that is, uh, has been a challenge and is still a challenge with us, and we must continue working together to make sure that we deal with it. Uh, certainly, the, the Minister of Interior and National Police Service are doing their part, uh, but it is also demoralizing if we generalize and say all police officers uh, are corrupt. That is not true. Just like we have corrupt people in many other agencies of government, you also have such a few elements in National Police Service, in a, a National uh, Transport Safety Authority, NTSA, and among others. And we, as from a government side, are working out every time to make sure that there is an accountability. And how are we going to do this? You know that uh, we, I promised the country that we are going to have speed cameras on the roads, including the black spots. Already we have a te testing cameras. You must have seen one in Kinungi, Southern Bypass, among uh, Tika Road. They are on the pilot project. Meanwhile, procurement is ongoing, um, and it's at the tail end. We, we really believe that in less than three months, the contractor will be on site. And we have agreed that once the contractor is identified and comes on site, we want to start with the black spots so that we can put speed uh, cameras on the black spots. 
That way we are going to, and these speed cameras are going to operate in such a way that we, you will have instant finding. You, your number plate is going to be captured and a message is sent to you directly that you pay this amount of money and the rest is, uh, is going to be enforcement of that payment. So we are working on that. Um, uh, mo uh, unfortunately, uh, Moses, sad as it may sound, and sometimes insensitive as it may sound, the, the figures of accidents last year and the year before and the year before are almost the same. Almost the same. Although there is in the in the first three months this year, we've lost uh, one thousand four hundred and if you remember, one thousand four hundred and I have the figure somewhere. Uh, uh, people, one thousand two hundred and seventy. Sorry, not four hundred. One thousand two hundred and seventy. One thousand two hundred and seventy. While la last year we lost in the same period about uh, one thousand. 160 something about 160 so the difference is about a hundred people those are lives eh? it's not it's not a joke uh, an extra hundred people but you will see that in the course of the year even last year we're trying to push the numbers to come down to come down so this month you're happy that it's low then the next month is going up like you know, we were happy this weekend. We did a lot of work. Our children went home and there were minimum accidents. And then as soon as that is, you know, the next day you find an accident. So you, you have this fluctuation. And then at the end of the year, you end up having, again, similar figures. 4,400, 4,500, 4,600, which has been a figure uh, that has been rotating. 209 was the worst, actually, with 4,600. And that figure uh, keeps uh, going up and down. And I want to say that we are trying, what our target is to bring the figure down. We may not tell exactly to what figure, but because this is a human being, if we can save one life, uh, that, that will be a great achievement. But we want to do as much as possible to make sure that we reduce the road carnage. And, uh, and His availability of resources. You will be shocked the amount of money that is in the National Police Service for training traffic poli uh, police officers. You give the police 30 million and tell them you train uh, all the police officers. And you know, you, are, you, are, uh, 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 you have you know, very limited resources being put in training, and this is a specialized area. Uh, uh, when's the last time you saw a 99? In like the old days of a police car uh, patrolling the highways to check uh, traffic enforcement. It's a long time ago. You know, in 2018, for example, the former administration removed all the vehicles we had in NTSA, which were helping the police, and no, no, none others were bought for the police to, for them to enhance the capacity they have. So we have a problem. We have a capacity problem, literally. The national, uh, the traffic police uh, department is not resourced enough. Well, NTSA also is not resourced enough. So we want to see if we can work with our parliament in this upcoming budget to rationalize the budget and make sure that uh, we put money where it deserves. We, 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 we are so much into, uh, we want to put money where we can get returns. We don't realize that protecting lives of people is a returns. And we need to put more money there in the protection of lives. We need to put money on our roads to complete the stalled roads so that we can mark them. We need to put money to make sure that we realign and, and redesign the areas that are giving us problems. So we have our, I, I can't envy the president because his plate is full. You're paying debts which are humongous and at the same time their service that must be given. So let's help each other as a country. Let's also help each other by not crossing swollen rivers. Honestly, you know, I mean, someone is just taking a chance to cross. You are endangering people's lives. And we want to request the uh, DPP to charge these people for the highest offenses. In fact, the, the drivers who are attempting to cross swollen rivers should be charged for attempted murder, you know, if they survive. It should be that, that serious. And we ask our also judiciary to, to meet the highest punishment on traffic offenders. Because in most cases, the, the driver who caused accident in McQueenie had been charged more than three times and released. Had been arrested, sorry, by the police more than three times. And somehow they found their, he found his way out and back to the, dri to the driving seat. And then eventually killed 14 people. 
this is preventable if we take also traffic offenses as a serious issue. In all over the world, countries take it as serious and they meet the highest punishment on those who are committing these offenses. Um, I think I have responded to as many questions as possible. The last one now that the IG is around. Yeah. On, uh, on those matatus that have small seats, they call uh, Sambaza. Sambaza in between. Sambaza. Yeah. And then the, the bribes that police wake up every morning at five collecting from Matatu. Yeah. They, 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 they are stationed somewhere, they stop a Matatu, they pick. You know, passengers, commuters see this and they look at their country and they are ashamed. Yeah. Police standing and picking 50 shillings, 100 shillings every morning at 5 a.m. What are you going to do? <laughs> from KTN. There used to be a systematic operation between NTSA and the National Police mm -hmm. and the traffic department where uh, we even used to see mobile courts where when, when you break an offense, yeah, yeah. you are taken to the court and then you get an instant uh, justice on it. Do you think it is high time we consider taking back uh, NTSA to our, to our roads so that they can have the police in terms of speed? Uh, management and also uh, the truth is that in 2018, as I said, the government then reversed that uh, working arrangement between NTSA and the police. And they had found a very good formula of working together. The police having the constitutional power to arrest and the NTSA assisting in terms of providing uh, uh, technical support because they have the inspection capa capability but also they had equipment that they were assisting together, working together with the police. And I think it helped in a way. Uh, if you look at the numbers, it came down uh, a little bit around that period of time. Of course, the government, in its own wisdom, then said that NTSA should be removed. <laughs> I hear some people saying, uh, saying that NTSA was to be removed because of corruption. Now they are saying the police should not be on the road because of corruption. Uh, we have agreed that we are going to work together and NTSA will progressively because now this is not something you wake up in the morning we have only 700 staff uh, we have only 67 inspectors now we need to rebuild again our capacity uh, to be able to get enough people that can come to the road so when we say we are coming back people will say we have not seen NTSA all over the country you need to understand that the, the institutional capacity that we have of 67 inspectors requires us to increase the number of inspectors so that we can have a presence across the country and uh, uh, truly we will we will work together with the police as we as we push for the resourcing of the police by the by the government uh, NTSA also will be resourced we've been working with other development partners who are, by 2018 we have made great progress except that the government reversed that decision now we have uh, the opportunity to uh, again bring back the development partners to work with us to get the resources for us to uh, uh, deal with the uh, enforcement in the roads. And let me just go back to this corruption issue. If you don't want to pay price, just do the right thing. Because it takes two to tango. The police don't pay themselves the bribe. The one who pays the bribe and the one who receives are equally guilty under the law. So why do they pay these bribes? Because they know that definitely they are not compliant. But if everybody was compliant, they, they would be safe. Number two, why would a citizen sit in a matatu and see uh, a, a, a driver giving out a bribe to a policeman and keep quiet? Yeah, in fact, the worst part of it is they go to social media. The only thing they say, a police picks a bribe. Let me tell you something. If 14 people in a matatu even if they are 10, say, hey, police, you and you say today, and you say tomorrow, even if you don't, even if you don't arrest the police officer or whoever, just shouting that it makes a whole difference. But we become, we've become experts in uh, our WhatsApp groups and our Facebook and Twitter. Remember when Kibaki came to office, in 22, 2003, citizens were arresting police officers who were taking bribes because there was a certain level of patriotism and citizen consciousness that everybody wanted to ensure that their country 
is safe and free from corruption. What stops us from going there as citizens? You know? Arresting drivers that are drunk and driving, refusing to board a car that is already overloaded, making sure that you don't board a border border more than one person. Because honestly, the police doesn't pick you and put you in a border border to be four people without helmet. You know? And you have this, I have done this week alone, I have stopped in several places to stop a border border rider and ask them, uh, why don't you have a helmet? Ah, pole pole saram kubo. You know? We, He's telling me, Paul, he doesn't even have the helmet there. He's not, he's, not, he's not there. Meanwhile, he's carrying three other people who are looking at me as, why are you interrupting our, our trip? It's, 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 you know, why are you interrupting our, our, our ride? Because everybody wants to, somehow we are somehow in a hurry in the country. Everybody wants to arrive somewhere very fast, even if it means dying. And it's not for lack of border border. In fact, the other border border riders waiting for a billion passenger. But because uh, those of you want to board one of them, uh, border border, all of you, and it saddens me. And I want to repeat this. You have a husband, a wife, and the children riding one border border, and they get an accident, and we lose all of them. It is terrible. And I just want to emphasize here that citizen consciousness and citizen commitment will be the most important thing. And if I have not said it here, please, please, my friends of the media, you know, when I went to NTSA last week, uh, many people s s keep seeing the clip that uh, I was in the NTSA and I, was, and I looked in a foul mood, I was angry. I didn't sleep the night before. And I don't want to repeat that story because it makes me very emotional. You see, like many of you, I have a child in school. Yeah? And for a parent to send their child to school, and the day they are waiting for them at home, yeah, that parent is waiting for a child and she does, it doesn't arrive just because somebody was reckless somewhere. That could be my child, you know, for those of us who have our children in high school. It could be mine. By the time I was going to NTC in the morning, you can, I mean, uh, my family is my witness, my wife is my I didn't sleep the whole night because of Chavakali's story. We had just come from Kapsabet. You just told the Chavakali, whatever. So by, when people are talking about other things like it was jokes, it was not to me. My mind the next day was really, really wondering. Last year, April, we lost a number of kids uh, because of a road accident in Naivasha for children who are being brought by a 14-seater matatu. I called this NTSA uh, CEO and I told him, whatever the resources, however little it is, Let's do everything possible this week when we are closing school to just make sure that the children get home safe. Because now we have mad people on the road. And I'm glad uh, this week at least the numbers involving children coming from school went down. But that is something that should pain us. You know, we are all, we are all used to niceties of, uh, you know, who is doing what. Is. If we can all of us just imagine your child is in school and you're waiting home. You, uh, somebody's husband has gone to hustle and he's being waited at home and the only breadwinner. You know, most of the people are driving these vehicles, young people, yeah, that are driving these vehicles and 20s, 30s, they just bought their first cars and they've gone for drinking on, like now, this time, they are drinking somewhere because tomorrow is a public holiday. I can tell you for sure, we know, because the statistics don't lie, that by 11 you have road accidents on the road involving private vehicles for people who are drunk that's why we are returning the drunk driving uh, the, the the alcohol blow and the like we are working on the regulations to return that so we, we shouldn't it shouldn't be government too much to manage individual human behavior but we are forced to do so because people are not taking responsibility in their hands i ask you and i urge you more once again media forget about more comment turn your cameras on the citizens Ask them. Let's work together. Let's support each other to push the focus on human behavior. All these are preventable if, if we are all conscious. If you bought a car and the 14th person is already in and the 15th come and all of you tell him shuka to meja kwaigari, that person has to shuka because you people care about your life. If the drivers of a speed and say, Dere, smama hapo, ume overtake marambili vibaya, unataka kutuwa.
if we will be able to do something that will turn our country. This thing requires a whole citizen approach for us to solve this problem, including the corruption. I, have, I, I used to be a preacher before, so <laughs> if I continue, I will, I will call for an altar call and I don't want to do so. Let's leave it there for today. And uh, please, engage the traffic commandant and NTSA. Please engage them. And if they are not responsive, tell us. Now come back to me and say, I was looking for information from NTSA. They don't want to tell us what they are doing. Or from the police, you tell my colleague Kindiki. Yeah? Or any of us here, the PS interior is here, the PS transport is here, the IG is here. Report. Report these people who are not responding to your questions. But we are going to resource them to go out there and preach this message. I also saw church members saying, where is the minister? If there is somebody who is more effective than the minister, he is the church minister who preaches to people every Sunday. Please help us preach to these people to get saved and follow the narrow path of traffic, uh, uh, obeying traffic rules. Because we need citizens... More than anything else, we need human behavior to change in this country. That one will make this country become a better place. And, and, and as I told you guys, I don't want to be the minister that goes around there chasing matatus and stopping them and pulling people. It's that I don't want this thing to be person-centric. Person I want it to be institutional. That's why I'm, I'm pushing for the cameras. So that those cameras will be there, whether Murkomen is there or not, it will be there. I'm pushing for telematics for the school. So that Murkomen is there or not, the school telematics can, 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 can be enforced. And all the things we want to do for posterity. But as we get there, let's work on our behavior. Asante Nisana.